So this is the lab verifying the absolute temperature and determination of the barometric pressure from the general chemistry lab manual. So the objectives covered in this lab will include using a balance, uh, basic glassware, you're going to use some uh, flasks and things, use of a hot plate. Um, this is a very quantitative lab. You're hopefully we'll get numbers that we'll be able to crunch and, and analyze. Um, but it's an experiment that's going to need a lot of careful uh, uh, handling. So, you know, this is one of these things where you might need to practice it to get really accurate readings. All right, so the basis of this lab is the use of the manometer to measure changes in gases. Okay, so just to remind yourself, so a manometer, you've got this long U-shaped tube, and <clears throat> if both sides are open, you can imagine that there's pressure going on both sides of it, and so in this case, this pressure is going to be the atmosphere pressure, which we'll call P bar, and then when it's open, um, there is atmospheric pressure on the other side as well, and so the levels are even. Okay, so that makes pretty much sense. Okay, but now <clears throat> you're going to have this hooked up through tubing to a flask. Okay, and so now this is a sealed system, right? So this whole thing here. So those, this gas has a specific volume, okay, that will be governed by the gas law, where we have, it'll have a pressure, it'll have a temperature, and there will be a certain number of moles, okay. So <clears throat> what we can do then is you can imagine that if we change the conditions here, we can change by heating the flask, and we'll do that in one of the experiments, and we can change the pressure. Okay, and try to keep, if we can keep one of these three things, con or, well, we know the number of moles, since this is a sealed tube, is going to be constant. So that'll be constant regardless. And then R is always constant. So if we have P, V, and T, so if we can keep one of those constant, then we can measure the effects of the other two. Um, it's pretty easy to see because you can see that as this volume expands, it's going to end up pushing this water down. Okay. So now the pressure though, okay, so if the pressure in here is equal to the pressure out here, then they will be level, okay? But if now this pressure goes up, okay, okay, that means this is pushing more force than this, right? So the total pressure in this situation then would be atmospheric pressure plus the extra inches of water, centimeters of water that you would be getting from this difference. So plus the centimeters of H2O that is seen in this difference. Okay, so this is this delta H. Okay. So, so that will mean that there is more pressure. So you have two experiments. In, pre, in experiment A, okay, in the manual, you are um, trying to keep the volume constant. Okay. So you're going to always try to keep this water level at the same level. Okay but you're going to heat up the, the flask, okay? So if you're heating up the flask, the temperature is going to increase. Our gas law here will know that if temperature increases and volume is constant, then pressure has to increase as well, okay? So as this gas, as you heat it up, the gas will expand around the manometer. Eventually though, what you're going to do is add water, basically start to increase this pressure, the weight on this side, okay? Basically, the volume goes back to its original size, and so then you'll be able to relate pressure and temperature. Okay? Volume will be constant, Okay, so that'll be the first experiment. In the second experiment, temperature is constant, and you're looking for the relationship between pressure and volume. Okay, So in the second one, you're going water, it's going to be a constant temperature, you're going to add water on side to the open side, and it's going to increase the pressure on this side this will shrink a little bit, right? Because as you prime, okay, and so you will be able to measure then the difference between two different heights of this water, and you'll be able to measure the volume at two different, uh, the volume of this whole thing, you'll be able to measure the difference there um, at two different um, people. In terms of safety, there's not too many safety concerns with this. Just make sure you don't burn yourself with a hot plate. 
Okay, so my general opinion is we should do part B first because it has a cooler um, temperature and you want it to be constant. And so you should do part B first because when you part A, you heat up and cool the flask, then it's all the wrong temperature when you want to do part B. So do part B first, measuring the barometric pressure. Sorry, there's a typo there. So just to review, you're going to put the sealed flask on the water manometer um, and you're going to measure the height of the water in both arms. And then what you will do in, with a ruler, and then um, you'll add a good bit of water to the open side. Uh, I would take it almost up to the top of the scale. You don't really want it taller than your ruler, so, you know, somewhere around 40 centimeters. And you're going to let it equilibrate for a few minutes, and then you'll measure the height on both of them. And that's basically it. You'll have the, uh, you'll be able to now do the experiment where you measure the, the change then in the uh, volume, measure the change in the pressure. Now, part C is a calibration. Now, part C I would do at the very end. And you can skip the part in the manual about the manometer uh, cross-section. So I'm just going to tell you it. 0.28 square centimeters. I've done a zillion, I've done about five manometers, they all have about the same one, so just use that. You will have to measure the volume of the flask, and so there you want to fill it with water and then measure the mass of the water um, so you can get that volume that the gas is occupying. Now I don't know, you know, the balances again are too heavy for the particular um, uh, volume of water you're going to have, so you're going to have to measure it in pieces, so make sure you, you add those together. So when you start, you want to make sure you get the water heated for the second part. So do that first. Get a, get a nice hot set of water, you know, maybe 200, 300 degrees. But that's probably too hot. Turn it back down, Dr. Weatherman. Okay. And then you'll have your manometer. You'll have your clamps. Now, the key to this experiment, I think, is getting a good seal on the cap. So they sort of suggest a sort of loop, putting a little water around it, and then sticking it in there, and then in your 500 mil flask, and then just giving it a good twist. Okay, so you do that just to make sure it's in there. Make sure you can see that. And that point, then you're okay. So <clears throat> now you want to put a little bit of water. Now I put in food coloring. If you want food coloring to help you see, that's fine. Uh, you can just use clear water if you can see the meniscus fine. So you want to just put a little bit in. Now when you're putting it in, the temptation is, is to just rock it in there. You kind of want to drip it in slowly. And that way you won't get air bubbles. Okay, and so you just want a little bit, just enough that you can measure. So that's usually, you know, about, that's probably about enough getting it just to the bottom. Now the scale is in inches, okay, so that's not very handy. Now if you do get a bubble, you can just put your pipette directly in the open arm and kind of just swish it up and down until the bubble is removed. Okay, so once you get a little bit in there, you can then, you know, put, seal the other side of the tube. Okay, so now you have a, uh, a way, you have a system now that has a volume, okay, that can be measured. And usually it just kind of slips on pretty easily. Um, and so then, and you now you may get a little bit of a negative difference here, but you want to measure this with a regular ruler. Measure, measure both sides, um, you know, in uh, centimeters to the nearest millimeter, okay. And now you can crank up the amount of water on the right-hand side. Now, in theory, then, the left-hand side has a fixed amount of gas in it and will compress only to the amount to which the, um, until the gas starts, you know, the pressure builds up on that, on that flask. Okay, and so you're going to add that and make sure you don't get any bubbles. But if you have bubbles, you can just kind of pump it up and down. And then finally, once you get up to about the top of the scale, you should be, you can measure it and you can measure the difference and that'll allow you then to do the math. All right, so after you've completed part B, then you can go back to part A. So in part A, you're going to be changing temperature, keeping volume constant. So you'll have the sealed flask, you'll have a little bit of water in both arms, and then you're gonna add water to the open side, so that will increase the pressure on the system. And so then this thing will be in a, a water bath, okay, the flask. And so you can then heat the water bath with some wa of the hot water that you heated previously, and warm that flask up until the gas expands to the point where the volume now is back to its original size. Okay, so you're going to keep, you're going to add, you're going to heat the sample until you increase the volume to its original size, and then you'll measure then the increase in the pressure on the right on the open side of the manometer will tell you then now you know what that pressure of that gas inside the sealed system is. Okay, and you're going to do this for a number of different temperatures. And you're going to calculate the pressure at different temperatures. 
and then you can plot this uh, pressure versus temperature. You can do it in Kelvin, you can do it in Celsius, doesn't matter. You'll get an equation that should be a straight line. You'll get a fit equation, and then you just solve for p equals zero, which is where uh, all molecule molecular motions and stop. And hopefully, it'll be pretty close to the to the original. We'll we'll find out uh, how variable it is uh, is something that uh, is very interesting to me in this lab. Okay, the water bath's actually going to be a little smaller than this. This one's the big one, but you're going to go ahead and clamp that in there with room temperature water. You're going to have a thermometer, get the temperature to the nearest tenth, and then you can, uh, you know, you'll have a little bit of water in there already, and you can go ahead and in the manometer, and so you can go ahead and seal the tube. And you'll have some sort of difference. You measure the... Um, Measure the height of the water on both sides. I let the manometer sit on the table, it makes it easier to do. So you'll measure those with the ruler, and that'll be your first temperature reading. Okay. At this point, then, you're going to add some water to the uh, side with the, uh, to the open side of it. You're going to increase that volume. And <clears throat> then you're going to add some hot water, use your hot hand, okay, you're going to add the warm water, it's not going to take nearly as much as it will here because our containers are a lot smaller to do that. Now you may have to siphon some water out, we'll have suction cups and hoses to siphon water out so you can add it, but then you want to measure the temperature. And I wouldn't put the thermometer there necessarily, but um, so when you add the, you heat the temperature, you will see that the side of the water will then increase. And yeah, when I add just so you can, as it's increasing, you'll see it go down. If it goes down too much, you know, then you might want to start cooling it. You'll want to stir the water bath a little so you can see now the gas is expanding and pushing back. And so I, my original mark is where that four is. And it gets a little too much, and then you can maybe add some ice or some cold water, bring it back down. So you only need, so you're going to repeat this five times. You need a small range of temperatures um, to be able to get it. All right, so we're going to work these in pairs. But again, run part B first, and then you can have the water hot enough for part A. Skip the manometer part in part C. You're just going to go right through. I'm just going to give you that number. You don't have to do it. But the second part of part C, you do have to. I do that at the very end. Um, and again, remember that the volume, the mass of water you're going to have to measure is bigger than what our balances have limit for, so be careful. Now this lab does give uh, potentially the potential for some erroneous data. There are multiple reasons for this. You can talk to your lab instructor about it. Um, we do have a separate post-lab uh, calculation video that can help you sort of understand the calculation. It's more important at this point that we sort of understand the calculations than necessarily worry about the exact number that it gives us. I will tell you that <clears throat> you can get, if, if the experiment's done well and, and carefully, you can get a good number. And even if it's done well, sometimes that number can be off by, by a good bit. So there's some limitations to this, but I think it's still a useful lab and I think it's a fun one to do. So make sure you go out and enjoy it.